Lance Sergeant Dan Collins joined the army at 16 and served in the Welsh Guards for over 10 years. Taliban here? No. In the summer of 2009, he fought in Operation Panther's Claw in Helmand Province, Afghanistan. He twice survived being shot and was blown off his feet by a roadside bomb. It was some of the most intense combat the British had experienced since the Second World War. I was in the same section as Dan, and I had a brief from the officer who said, if you look around all your friends now, some of your friends will die, and some of your friends will lose their arms and legs. And what I'm asking you to do is keep on going until the end. That's the only brief I had, but I thought, fucking hell. You just said your friends are going to die. Days after that briefing, Dan's friend, Lance Corporal Day Nelson, was blown to pieces just yards away from him. After I returned from Helmand, I met Dan and recorded his recollections of that day. That was probably one of the lowest moments of my life. I mean, you just all sat there and we had our own little cry and everyone just sort of had their own little moment. It just like someone ripping your heart out. Phone calls changed. And I remember him telling me, he said, Mum, this place is hell on earth and I just want to get out of here. After a six-month tour in 2009, during which 81 British soldiers were killed, the Welsh Guards returned home. And obviously then I started noticing things, just little things. Um, nightmares were the main thing. He shouted Dane constantly, all the time. And every time I woke him up, I had to reassure him of where he was and that everything was okay. It was pretty clear that he was back there, reliving everything. The army diagnosed Dan with post-traumatic stress disorder and sent him home to Wales. He was living with Vicky and had to drive three hours to an army base to see a psychiatric nurse. The journey was more traumatic than the actual treatment. He used to come back worse than when he'd left. Every time he's going, he's seen someone different, so he's having to start again. Um, he probably saw the same person no more than three times. So there was, it, it was doing more harm than good. After ten months of intermittent treatment, the army told Dan he'd recovered and would soon be ready to return to duty. Two months later, he tried to kill himself. We'd been at a wedding all day. Everything was fine. He got back to the house and he went straight into the kitchen and got a knife. He stabbed himself in the leg and there was blood everywhere. And that's when he got in the car and, and drove off. He drove his car into a wall. Um, I think it was a cry for help. Three weeks later, Dan took an overdose of antidepressants. He was admitted to an NHS psychiatric ward. I phoned the welfare officer and told him what happened. By this time, their attitude was kind of like, oh, here we go again. They came down to speak to him and to, and to, speak, to speak to me and his mother and basically agreed that they would leave the treatment in the hands of the NHS. The army no longer has residential units for soldiers with PTSD, so Dan had to be cared for in an NHS ward. The caliber of patients there were schizophrenics, heavy drug users. It wasn't the right environment for him. He was put in an empty room for 20 odd hours a day, and they would just dose him up with drugs. More antidepressants, more diazepam, sleeping tablets, just on a regular, daily basis, just more and more drugs. After five weeks in the NHS ward, Dan was released and moved back in with Vicky. He told me his flashbacks were getting worse and he started missing his weekly NHS appointments. 
I wanted to help him, but I didn't know what to do. Of course, it takes a toll on, you know, your relationship. And I just asked him to leave. And he packed up all his stuff. Literally packed up absolutely everything. And just left. Just wish there, wish there was something, something else I could have done. On New Year's Eve 2011, Dan left Vicky, put on his army uniform and the bandana he'd worn in Afghanistan, and drove into the Priscelli Mountains. This is where Dan camped out before New Year's Day. He had all his army kit really and he was in his combat fatigues. He recorded his farewell video on his phone, probably lying against the bank of this gully. Dan's mother has given permission for his video to be shown. Hey man, um, just a video um, just to say I'm sorry, okay? So ever since I've come back from there, I've turned into a horrible person and I don't like who I am anymore. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing, okay? I don't know it's selfish, but it's what I want and what I need. I can't live like this anymore. Um, I don't know, I don't think I'd like to ask. Could I have a full military funeral if that's possible? So I'd like to go. Mum, um, please don't get too upset. You've got to understand, this is what I want. I've tried all the help. This, nothing's worked. It seems to be working, okay? But I love you, okay? I'll see you. I'll see you up there in a few years. Well, hopefully not a few years, but you know what I mean. I love you. Bye. Right. Bye. Just after recording the video, Dan Collins hanged himself.